Welcome into episode 74 of the Level Flight Podcast. My name is Connor. I've got Brian here with me today. And it is 7 o'clock Friday night. We just wrapped up all of our trade deadline day coverage. And the Jets made a few big moves. But before we get into that, Brian, how are you doing today? You know, I am doing better tonight than I thought I was going to be. Uh, largely based on what happened during the day today. Um, yeah. but no, I, I'm, I'm doing great. I'm excited to talk about what we're about to talk about. Excited to do our live this weekend because I can't wait to see what everyone thinks in the chat. Um, but no, I'm, I'm raring to go. And the reason Jets fans are so fired up is because Tyler Toffoli is a Winnipeg Jet. The Jets made the move early Friday morning. I want to say 10 30. Um, they made that move. It's a 2025 second round pick so not the montreal second the year after it's winnipeg second rounder and then this year this upcoming draft it's the 2024 third round pick and tyler to comes over at 50 percent retained for his salary which opened the door for the winnipeg jets to make another move and add a depth defenseman they went right back to the well with the new jersey devils and picked up colin miller for a 2026 fourth round pick an unbelievable like sequence of events for the Winnipeg Jets and Kevin Shovel Day off. One move coming in the morning, one coming in the afternoon. But Brian, what what was your initial reaction? Kind of a where were you when moment uh, when Tyler Toffoli became a Winnipeg Jet? So it's funny. I have a horrible, horrible knack for choosing the worst moment to leave my place whenever something happens. So I remember in... 2019 when the jets traded for kevin hayes it mm. happened when i left the house to go pick up my mom from work yeah uh awesome. today i went out with uh my lovely girlfriend to go get some starbucks because we're like you know we need to pick me up and uh uh-huh. as we return home i look at my phone and it has exploded and uh i i Knew it because I actually I made a joke about that as I was in the car. I'm like, listen, just because of my track record, I'm going to come back and there's going to be like a Jets trade or something that's going to be notable. I didn't yeah. think it would be to Foley um, because I'll be honest, it, that forward market was dwindling early. Quick. Like yeah. I, I we <laughs> we had a bunch of different things prepared today on the level flight account that I had to scrap almost immediately because they mentioned uh, guys like uh, Jordan Eberle, who signed an extension today, which that's a whole other discussion because I have no idea what Seattle's doing. And yeah. uh, Alex Carrier, who I thought was going to be available on the trade market, he is someone that the Predators want to keep. So I ended up scrapping that entirely. But what was notable was on my graphic, the only one that came to light, so I'm taking full credit for it, um, <laughs> said Tyler Toffoli was my number one target. And then... In that post, at I think it was posted in at like 9, 10 a.m., so before this whole thing happened, I said, yeah. I wonder if the Jets should consider it a fully Miller package, and I am, I've never been happier with myself. You, take your victory lap because they got both. Um, yeah, the that's, that's hilarious. I feel like everyone has stories of like, oh, the Jets traded for this person when, or like the Line A Dubois trade happened at like midnight uh, on like a <laughs> Tuesday. It was the weirdest thing, but Anyways, I, I feel like that was a, a big moment. And then the Jets, obviously, right at the buzzer, acquired Colin Miller. Let's get into ty- this Tyler Toffoli deal because, obviously, he's the number one trade target. I mean, like, he was number one, literally, at the time on the trade board. Kevin Cheveldayoff in his press conference talked about how discussions kind of started last night with New Jersey when Toffoli was held out of the lineup because everyone knew they were going to trade him. And then this morning, he circled back. Like what you said, Brian, the wingers market started to dwindle a little bit. You know, Eberle was gone. Um, and and I think Chevy circled back. The Devils gave them the price. And he went, you know what? The, the winger market's dwindling. I got to make this move now. And he did. He got a bona fide top six winger to add to the Jets. I'm so pumped to to see him get integrated into the lineup. But let's bring up his JFresh card. Um Analytically, I mean, he's an offensive force. He's he's a proven 30-goal scorer. He's on pace to hit it once again this season. Obviously, he's a Stanley Cup champion, but that came a decade ago uh, with the Los Angeles Kings um, in his rookie season. But, hey, it's experience nonetheless. And Jets fans will remember very well, but he was a mainstay in the Montreal Canadiens lineup that sent the Jets home 
in a sweep in the COVID year, he actually scored the OT winner to end that series off and give Montreal the win. Um, so a proven playoff scorer, and I'll get your thoughts on this deal in a second here, but what I've been telling everyone and what I said on Winnipeg Sports Talk, and I, I texted my dad this, I'm say, I said, Tyler Toffoli is going to score at least three huge goals for the Winnipeg Jets in the playoffs. If they win a playoff series and they get get into round two and they even maybe even get into round three, Tyler Toffoli is going to have a handful of huge goals, like in the third period or an overtime winner. He's just a clutch goal scorer. Um, he's an offensive generator. He generates chances off the rush, and he's another sniper in that top six for a team that struggled with finishing here and there. That's kind of my takeaway from this, and I think the biggest the biggest aspect of it was the price, getting him at just a two and a three at 50% retained, and you get all those things that I mentioned there. What are your initial thoughts of Toffoli and the fit in the lineup? Well, for me, I, I there was a bit of concern for me when you know more and more reports started coming out that no one was really convinced that the Jets were going to make any sort of big splash. And I think a lot of people assign that to guys like Pavel Buchnevich, who that was another guy this morning. I did, I left that out. Um, came out from, uh, you know, the, the St. Louis athletic beat that they probably weren't going to move Pavel Buchnevich, which is why it was even more shocking to me when the Jets came out as the, the suitor for Tyler to because as you said, he was the number one target left on the board mm -hmm. after that. And he just, to me, seems like the perfect fit to round out that top six and also provide the team with some flexibility because I do think that that second line is going to produce like a first line if they are given the ice time. Um, yeah. But he seems like a great guy to play with Nikolai Ehlers, who's going to create a bunch of open space with how he weaves through the zone. And then he, either whether it's to Monaghan or to Foley, he's going to have someone he can drop the puck to. And then suddenly yeah. they've got a shot. But I also feel like it's very important that there has been moments where um, Gabe Velarde has bounced around the lineup a little. Um, sometimes you've seen him on that second line in favor of guys like, uh, you know, Ehlers has moved up. But you also had even recently you've seen Vlad Nemestikov on the top line in Velarde's absence. I also think, too, where at some point, if there's some issues with that top line, you could see Toffoli move up. And I, I don't yeah. feel uncomfortable with that anymore because yeah, it seems as if they're going to staple Ehlers to that second line uh, left wing spot for the rest of the year. I've kind of made my peace with that as much as I, I get angry. Um, but with the setup now, I feel better. And obviously it'll remain to be seen how he gels with, it, with them and everything. But to fully playing in the Velarde spot, if either Velarde's out with injury still, uh, because we don't exactly know when he'll be back. Like I know he's not right. with the team right now, but they're optimistic that it's not a long term thing. Right. Um, you got a lot of scoring there. Uh, I, it's just I wonder yeah. if it's it's going to sound weird. Is it too much scoring on one line and not enough faci like facility? Because it's like you're you're looking yeah. at guys who they're all shooters. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, true, and. So Sorry. Yeah, I don't I, I don't know. Like it's it's one of those things where uh stylistically I think it works so much better on that second line with him. Yeah. I, one thing I do want to say is if you, you brought up the potential of him moving up to the top line. Um Corey at shutdown line on Twitter, uh all three zones.com. Go check out his work. It was fantastic today. He had a oh, great, great thread on all the trade deadline stuff. He posted to Foley's his version of player cards, this is what you're looking at right now, is Jay Fresh, but his version, um, rush offense per 60, Toffoli is one of the best in the league, and also shots off of high danger passes per 60, Toffoli was one of the elite, or like he had an elite metric uh, in that, and guess who is like one of the league leaders in passes into high danger areas? Mark Shifley. So I, I think that there is a, a fit there between Mark Shifley and Tyler Toffoli. You could see a lot of goals being set up there from Shifley to Toffoli um, if that's where the Jets choose to play them. Again, there's so many options in that top six now. You don't have to run Connor Shifley, Velarde. Uh, you can run Connor Shifley, Toffoli. But then, like you said, is that too much scoring? Okay, then you go back to Velarde or you switch it up, right? And I think this gives the Jets a, a stellar top nine that they can roll in the playoffs. And they'll have a fourth line that they can trust at the absolute minimum. Uh, when healthy, they'll have 
Nemesnikov and Ayafalo on that fourth line at the, at the minimum, and then Perfetti or Baron. Not sure how much Rick Bonus is going to trust Cole Perfetti in a playoff setting, but these like you also you've got like in, obviously it's going to have to there's going to have to be a move at some point with you know moving guys up and down. But if it's not Perfetti, it's it's Gustafson who's a big body. Right. If it's not Gustafson, it's Kupari who's fast and can you know really get on the forecheck. So it's one of those things yeah. where th you've got three different dynamics that you could slot in on the fourth line there. And I don't think we've seen a lineup this dynamic since 2017-18. I don't think so either. And this is this is like Tyler Toffoli. I wrote about it in the Hockey Writers on Thursday morning. That article came out. Called it. The, 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 yeah, the, fir the first header was that the Jets should be targeting Tyler Toffoli because he's the perfect fit for what it said they were out there looking for, which was a veteran with playoff experience who could score because the Jets have had finishing issues this year. When they had that like five game losing streak and they like they weren't scoring any goals, they were generating offense at a decent rate. It dipped a little bit in some games, but there were some games they were generating more than enough. They just weren't getting the bounces. And Todd Foy is the kind of guy where you could have a terrible shift um, and you could be at a minute and a half, but if him and Ehlers break in on a two-on-one, there's not many people I want in the league on a two-on-one rather than Ehlers and Toffoli, the way Ehlers can generate offense and the way Toffoli can bury chances, like plain and simple. So I I think this is yeah. the perfect move. I, I really do. I really do. I love it, it. It was also too, like I'll give it a little bit of a shout out here too. We had uh Marat on last yes. Tuesday and yep. one he name dropped him in the episode but then just after that episode aired he also dropped a piece on what the perfect deadline would be and at, much like you did Tyler Toffoli's name was right there he was the feature it's image perfect fit, man. Uh, yeah. for both of your pieces um, yeah. And for what it's worth, he will be the feature image of mine for my deadline there recap, which will drop, I guess, when this comes out, it'll be out this morning too. So um, there's just so much fun to be had with this lineup. Yeah. And I'm, yeah, that, that quote right there, there's so much fun with this lineup. There's it's, this is going to be so much fun the next couple months or month and a bit, two months, um, maybe even three if the Jets like roll through the playoffs. But anyways, this is going to be so much fun. Tyler Toffoli's perfect ad. Um, and the Jets made a big splash at the deadline. Let's get yeah. into their second deal of the day, which was Colin Miller. Um, they, they brought him over for a fourth round pick that was three years from now in 2026. And they will, it, it's a depth ad on the blue line. They went back to New Jersey. So not quite a package deal with Toffoli and Miller. But when you're looking at the day as a whole, it's it's from one team and you got two players. So yep. I really like this move as well. Uh, I knew, even with five minutes left, I think I threw in our Telegram chat, it was 155, and I said, I still think they're going to add a defenseman. I, I, know I was right there with you. Yeah, yeah. I, we were both like, you know, I think even though there's five minutes left, it, it just feels right, especially the fact that they retained half of Toffoli's contract. Um, there was room to do so. And they did exactly that. I really like the Colin Miller edition. Jets fans will know him yeah. well from the year that Vegas went to the final uh, in 2017-18, going through Winnipeg. He was on that blue line. Um, what are your What were your initial thoughts when they brought in Miller? I know you mentioned him earlier on in the day in, in our Telegram chat, like you said. But when the Jets actually made the move and you you thought about maybe the fit in the lineup, what what were your thoughts? My first thought was, is this a guy who Rick Bonus would trust to play in the top four. And my like we've we've had a lot of discussions about the ideal defensive fit. And I think what we were looking at was the big name guys, the Tanevs, the Walkers, that Chikrin. based on the acquisition yeah. cost alone, you have to play them in the top four. Yeah. Stylistically though, I think he fits the mold of what Rick Bonus likes, where he is someone who is defensively sound moves the puck well and knows when to jump into the rushes and mm. one that's as i said something bonus likes but two something the jets desperately need the puck moving on the defensive group needed to improve um he has been in and out of the lineup this year in jersey and i think mainly that's because lindy ruff is not of the mindset that the, the defenseman should be as you know active um so his style of play didn't jive with that 
And I know that there's been some butting heads there with, you know, some of the rookie guys because that's what their game is. Um, but in our system here in Winnipeg, this seems like a great fit on paper. And I'm really looking forward to seeing him in the lineup. I think you'll see him as starting as the, the six, seven guys. So um, someone who's either going to be in the Schmidt spot or the first man up. But what's going to happen here is you're now you've distanced yourself. Uh, so it's not Schmidt and Stanley are the two guys who are going to be in and out of the lineup. If there's injuries, you have a quality defender who's right there waiting. If he's not playing or if he is playing, then you've got Schmidt to step in. Um, and then you could possibly have, you know, Pionk, uh, you know, bump down to play with Sandberg. Um, mm -hmm. it, it makes it way more dynamic. And that's the, the biggest thing is there's flexibility. It's dynamic. And he's just like, he's a really good player. And, and there's insurance there. Like if there's an injury uh, now, again, you're not one injury away from Logan Stanley having to play meaningful minutes in the playoffs. And I think that is worth the acquisition cost alone. Um, you take a look at his athletic card here. And these, these numbers, I think are a little generous. Uh, you look at some other um, like, no doubt he's crushed it in a depth role, like absolutely crushed it in, in New Jersey in Vegas, when he's on the third pair, he's he's been great. It's just a matter of, I think that market value you're seeing there, 6.8 million, 4.9 in surplus value off of his current contract. I think that's a little bit of, he's done so well in a third pairing role that his numbers are inflated a little bit. Can that translate to a top four role? I'm not sure, but I think it might still be an upgrade over Pionk if that's the way they choose to go yeah. is with Miller on that second pair. But again, at the absolute minimum, He's on the third pairing with Sandberg, and that third pairing is going to be a great shutdown pair. And like you said, he's a puck mover. And they gave up a fourth round pick three years from now. Like, yeah, th like this is this this is Kevin Sheveldov. Have yourself a day. Like, oh my, yeah. like my goodness. Uh, you, have you, yourself we a talked month. about the have yourself a have year. Yourself, have yourself a decade. No, I'm kidding. That's a little too far. <laughs> let's let's okay. There there was let's, moments there, but the last yeah. year for him. Has been truly. Unreal. You look at like his track record from the last year. It's truly some of the best and most tidy work that any NHL has GM over that like the GM has done over that time. And I'll fully admit it. I was wrong. A year ago at the deadline, when the Jets were sliding and they bought still and got Niederreiter, and we wanted them to like really push their chips in, but then they slid and it, what we weren't sure. I was wrong, man. That he has absolutely crushed it this past year. I, we got to give yeah. him his flowers because unbelievable work by Kevin Sheveldayoff in both of the deals today. And this team is well equipped for a playoff run. Simple as that. Yes, it is. Um, let's take a break from DraftKings. We're going to come back. We might touch on these deals a little bit more, but we are going to take a wider scope as well. Take a look around the NHL because there are a lot of trades today. Some that I love, some that I don't. Uh, and the Western Conference, the first round of the playoffs, man, is going to be unbelievable with how stacked the Western Conference is. But anyways, let's hear from DraftKings. We will be right back with more trade deadline talk. Stick with us on episode 74. We know hockey games move fast, but with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NHL, you can score faster than anything happening on the ice. This week, new customers can bet 5 bucks and get 200 instantly in bonus bets. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app with code THPN. New customers bet $5 on the NHL and get 200 instantly in bonus bets. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code THPN. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, licensee partner Golden Nugget Lake Charles. 21 plus, age varies by jurisdiction, void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.com slash hockey for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. NHL and the NHL Shield are registered trademarks of the National Hockey League. Copyright NHL 2024, all rights reserved. And welcome back into episode 74 of the Level Flight Podcast. Brian, this was pointed out to us by, um, I'm not sure the Twitter handle, is it the real Kevin Shovel Day off on Twitter? <laughs> but we were one episode off from this being episode 73. 
and breaking down the Tyler Toffoli trade, that would have been that would have been storybook. It would have been so been. good. Yeah, yeah. Um, let let's let's talk a little bit more about the Toffoli deal just before we head into the rest of the NHL. Um, I I I know you have some more thoughts on it. We've both been high on Toffoli ever since he was kind of made available. I mean, New Jersey wasn't even really selling up until a few days ago. Um, if you were to assign a grade uh, for the Jets, for the Toffoli deal and for the Miller deal separately, um, what what would those be? I, I'll go next, but I'll throw the floor to you. All right. So in terms of, I'm going to kind of weigh it like this, where the Jets, need they needed certain things and they had certain assets that you knew that they were probably going to clutch a little bit closer to them. They managed to get the need that and fill that without having to use any prospects or any pick of value from this year. Uh, it is for that reason that this easily scores an A for me. This is an A, yeah. and also because the fact that you get you get a retention, which largely leads to the Colin Miller deal. I don't like. I don't actually think I've seen it mentioned anywhere, just because. It's everyone's just kind of living the dream right now. <laughs> Tyler Toffoli has the same amount of goals as Kyle Connor. Yeah, those two have twenty six yeah. goals. They're tied for the team league or the team lead now, which obviously he hasn't contributed to the Jets yet, but we'll get there. Right. But <laughs> you get a guy who is going to be tied for the team lead in goals at a retained value for a second next year and a third this year. That's got to be an A. As for the Miller deal, I, yeah. I find it very easy to like this. Like, I don't actually really see a drawback to it because they needed defensive depth and getting it for a fourth. I'm going to purely just because, like, I feel like there was an opportunity to swing that second rounder for Montreal this year to do something a little bit more guaranteed to be a top four guy. I'll give it a B. Plus. Mm -hmm. But also, he's not flashy. So it's not like he's going to be, you know, a game breaker, but he's going to help. And so that's why it's still up there. A B plus is just fine. I've got a B plus in a couple classes right now. So, <laughs> hey, we, we take B pluses for sure. And I, I agree with you on Toffoli. I'd even go A, A plus when you, you threw in the thing there, like the 50% retained allowed them to go get Miller. Um, and obviously, we'll wait and see on what ends up happening with Tyler Toffoli as a Winnipeg Jet. And if they extend him or not uh, next year, um, I don't know if they even have the cap for that. They, We might be having a discussion in the offseason, who do you bring back, Monaghan or Toffoli, right? Like that might be a legitimate discussion um, if both of them want to resign. But I'd go AA plus as well. And uh, yeah, for a team, like th their leading point getter is Mark Shifley, who's I think at a point per game or just above it. Like this team doesn't have any like superstar point getters. And I think that's that's huge. You bring up you bring up a guy. You bring in a guy. Sorry, who's tied for the team leading goals? Like that's that's massive. Um, and so I give that yeah a a plus. Colin Miller. Um, let's you, you nailed it with B plus, but I don't, I just don't want to say the exact same thing. A minus. It's fine. <laughs> a minus for Colin Miller. Um, no, I I do think B plus is fair. And I think if he ends up playing in a top four role, um, like with Brendan Dillon, bump it up, curve it, bump it, bump it up, yeah. But at the absolute worst, it's a B plus deal because they he steadies that third pairing and improves it in a big way. So I agree. Let's get into some of the trades that happened across the league. And I, I've got to say, this was one of the best deadline days um, in a long time that I can remember. Like yeah. there were a lot of deals right down to the end as well. Like it started slow. And then Winnipeg broke the dam with Tyler Toffoli. And it just feel like since after that, Gensel got traded the night before, like things were happening uh, in and around the trade deadline. It felt like two days worth of trade deadline news. Um, I want to start. Where do I want to start? Let's start with Gensel. Let's do that. Let's go back to last I night. Actually, I was going to say, do we want to quickly? We didn't get a chance to. I mean, I say we. I wasn't on the episode. We didn't get a chance to talk about anything that happened on the Wednesday. Right. Let's just, let's like rapid fire through these. Yeah. Trades. Let, let's. Okay. So I'll start with. Uh, I'm just going to read some out and just uh, initial thoughts, and we'll move on. Uh, yeah. So the the action started on the Wednesday with Tarasenko to Florida, 
for a conditional fourth and a 2025 third. And my first inclination was that's all you could get for Tarasenko. Love it for Florida. Love it. You get yeah. a middle six score to add to an already loaded top nine. And again, you only have to give up a three and a four. This is like the Toffoli deal, but a Walmart version. So I love it for Florida. <laughs> uh, Adam Henrique, Sam Carrick, and a seventh to Edmonton for a 2024 first and a conditional 2025 fifth. Uh, i not exactly sure if I understand the value here, especially with what happened today. Um, but, yeah. I mean, Edmonton, they had a certain level of they wanted to increase their depth. They did so. Henrique's, you know, dependable. But I think it was, it was just kind of a wash for me. Yeah, like, okay, I, I had a take today on, on Winnipeg Sports Talk stream, and it's like, what is Edmonton doing? You have two more years of dry saddle, you have three more years of McDavid, and your premier ad is Adam Henrique and Sam Carrick, and you're going to clap your hands and call it a day? Like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You got to swing, man. You got to go get a Tyler Toffoli. You got to go get a Jake Gensel. <laughs> you got to you gotta go get a Jacob Chikrin. Like you're the Edmonton Oilers. You have arguably the greatest hockey player of all time or the most talented hockey player of all time. And yeah. you're you're not going to swing big at the deadline. That's mind-boggling to me. Mind-boggling. So yeah. for that reason, like the trade in a nutshell, fine. You get Adam Henrique and, and another depth forward. But in the grand scheme of things, what is Edmonton doing? I, I, I don't get it. These two trades happened back to back and it really impacted, I think, what the Jets were planning on doing at the deadline mm -hmm. um, because it made them realize that, oh boy, we got to we gotta make sure we don't fall behind after Dallas got tan of, what, two weeks ago now? Yeah. Um, and then Colorado traded for Sean oh. Walker in a fifth for, for Ryan Johansson in a conditional 2025 uh, first. And then they turned around half an hour later and traded Bowen Byram to Buffalo one for one for Casey Middlestad. I mean, I like both of those moves for Colorado. I, I don't really have any complaints yeah. from their end. Uh, I still don't exactly understand what Philly's doing because um, also apparently they're not going to do anything with Ryan Johansson. Um, yeah. They're just going to let him ride off into whatever sunset he's going to. And I love it for Buffalo because, I mean, there was clearly no traction on where middle stat was going to be there in the future. Mm -hmm. But Bowen Byram, I think there's still something there. He's been struggling a bit recently, but that's a very young defensive core in Buffalo that if they even catch slightly, it's going to be good. Yeah, I 100% agree. I love the middle stat ad for Colorado, even though it's Colorado and I don't love that for them. Yeah. <laughs> At the same time, like as a, as, as a Jets podcast, we don't want to see the abs doing well, but middle stat, great addition for them. Byram, like I can't like he's he's a very talented defenseman. He struggled recently. How long are they going to wait for him to refine his game? You have McKinnon and McCarr in their prime. I like that move for them. And then the Walker deal. I mean, Walker's a, a top four guy. Colorado's game one of the playoffs lineup on defense looks really good. Looks really stellar, and they're going to need it because they have goaltending issues. So I like both those moves for them. I hate the fact that it's Colorado, but. Yeah, on them. <laughs> but obviously the Jets did something to counteract it. And right, I, I they feel kept up. just as fine as I did before. So, um, okay, I'm going to roll through these ones because they happened and everyone talked about them already. But Hannafin went to Vegas for uh, a pick and two prospect, right. uh, or a, two two picks and a prospect. Uh, yeah. Joel Edmondson went to Toronto, um, mm -hmm. and then you also got another ad, which was Yakov Trenin from Nashville goes to Colorado, another right. depth guy for them. And then we got into last night, which, as you said, the Gensel deal. Jake Gensel and Ty Smith to Carolina in exchange for Michael Bunting, Vili Koivinen, Vasily Ponom Ponomarev, geez, Cruz mm -hmm. Lucius, Chaz's brother, yeah. uh, a conditional 2024 first and a conditional 2024 fifth. I think overall... I don't think anyone can deny the fact that this is a Hurricanes win. It's a Hurricanes win, and I agree. I just don't think it's as lop like people obviously on Twitter are like, oh, fleece one way or the other, whatever. But I don't think it's that bad. Like, again, from Pittsburgh's perspective, you could go get two first round picks for Gensel, but that doesn't help you. You have yeah. Malkin, Crosby, Latang, Carlson, all these guys that are 35 years old or older. Um, you need a Michael Bunting. 
and a bunch of prospects who could hit next year or the year after because that's when the window is. So, like, I don't mind it. As for Carolina, I love it. They need a goal scoring just as bad as the Jets did, like a top six score. They get their guy. If they extend Gensel, this is a massive, massive win for them. Um, love it from Carolina's side. And don't hate it as much as everyone is making it out to be yeah. from Pittsburgh's side of things. See, what's interesting too is Carolina ended the night uh, last night with this deal and then today opened the day with another one, right. which I don't think m many people saw. They're taking a shot at Evgeny Kuznetsov, who has fallen off a cliff, who was struggling on and off the ice. Um, yeah. They got him for a third. Washington's retaining 50%. Um, I don't mind it. I feel like he could, he's not going to have to be a number one center there and mm -hmm. he could be feeding some guys who are going to be good. So I, that's yeah. kind of all my thoughts on it. And they got them to retain 50%, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's fine. I mean, they're yeah, it's, it's a high upside, uh, gamble. Yeah. Cause that's how it's been there before. He was part of that cup run for Washington. So I, I don't hate it. And Carolina. I don't know, man. They they might be up there in the East. Them, the Rangers, and Florida. I think it's one of those three teams. Boston as well. But yeah, I like it. Yeah, and then like throughout the day, there was a few targets that I think were mentioned at some point, either by us or someone else in the Jets community, that um, they were on the move somewhere else. So things like uh, a Jason Zucker trade to uh, Nashville. For um, just a six, that was weird. For yeah. a sixth, absolutely. Uh, but also Eric Johnson to the Flyers, which I am very much okay with because I did not want Eric Johnson. Um, yeah. Matt Dumba and a seventh to Tampa for a fifth. Remember um, when they wanted a first for him? Ridiculous. And then absolutely right near the end ridiculous. Of, uh, right near yeah. the end of things, things got really weird. First, I'm going to touch on the fact that Drac Jack Roslovic was traded to the Rangers, and I think they're looking right. for like more out of him than I think he can give, but we'll see. Yeah. And then this is the one that we were talking about before we went on air tonight. Yeah. Vegas acquires Tomas Hurdle, a 2025 third and a 2027 uh, third as well in exchange for a 2025 first and David Edstrom, who was there for Vegas's first round pick uh, last year. Last year. Yeah. Um, I I feel like the the biggest thing about this that people were making such a big deal about was just like how random it was. No one was expecting this, right? Um, I don't foresee Hurdle becoming exactly what he was before he's been dealing with his injuries. Yeah, neither like, do I. I don't. I, yeah. I don't get it. Like these, I, what six more years at eight million? I guess with seventeen percent retained. So it's six and a quarter. I think is his contract for six years still though. But I. This is where I don't I don't get it from a roster construction standpoint where, okay, your top line center is Jack Eichel. Your second line center is William Carlson because he's better than Thomas Hurdle. And then Hurdle's your 3C. Are you paying six and a quarter for the next six years for a 3C? Or you, they're going to play him on the wing in the top six? Is like, I don't know. I, yeah. I just... Vegas had money to burn. They went and got Mantha. They got Hannafin. They got Hurdle now because Stone is on LTIR. So they have all this money, uh, newfound money to add. And man, like it's, I, I just don't get it from Vegas's perspective. Sure, you're getting Thomas Hurdle, who's been a top six center in his career, but he's on the wrong side of 30. He's getting paid over $6 million a year and is coming off a major injury. I, I liked Vegas's aggressiveness and I liked it when they went and got Mantha and they went and got Hannafin and they're probably going to extend Hannafin, but I think this went too far. I think this, this wasn't the right move for them. Was it aggressive? Hell yeah, it was, but I just don't, I just don't think it was the right kind of aggressive. Get go aggressive for players that are 26 and just about to hit their prime, like Noah Hannafin or 24 year olds who are studs. Don't go aggressive for 30 year olds with, with massive, injuries coming well, off even of if you do if you injuries. go for a like, guy with like a massive injury at 30 you go for him if he's got like a like a year left on his deal so if he yeah. doesn't work out the next year you just let him walk into free agency you gotta They're deal with that for six more years yeah i also and, don't get it from the sharks perspective because they've already used all of their retention slots for next year yeah i mean 
from the Sharks' perspective, I actually think this is a good return for them. You're getting a, another first-round prospect in David Edstrom, and you're getting a first-round pick. It'll be a late first for Vegas because they'll be good. But at the same time, I again, Thomas Schrodel, I don't think his value is that high. So I, I don't mind the, the two firsts. And for a team that's bad, and they're going to be bad for a while, stockpile as many picks as you can. And uh, yeah, do right by Thomas Hurdle in a sense. Send him to Vegas, let him contend. But I, I like it from San Jose's perspective in a way. I don't know. Yeah, and I'll, yeah. I'll wrap my rapid fire yeah. trades. That was with, fun, yeah. <laughs> yeah, with going back to New Jersey and who have just confused me to no end today. Yeah. Because... Their whole thing was they they hated their goaltending. They wanted better goaltending. Because for the most part, they've been running a tandem of Vitek Vanacek and then one of Nico Dawes or Akira Schmid. Mm -hmm. um, they acquired Jake Allen, which I'm like, that's not moving the needle at this point. And no. then I actually, this is the one that I don't mind. They flipped um, Vanacek to San Jose uh, for Capo Kakinen. Yeah. And Kakinen, all things considered, hasn't been awful. Um, yep. Everything looks so much worse when you're in San Jose. Um, but yeah, no, I actually, I still don't understand though, where you like, you wanted something to improve your goaltending because you thought that that was the only reason that you weren't doing well. And then you flipped your tandem from Vanacek and Schmid to Jake Allen and Capo Kakinen. Yeah, that's not, that's not pushing you anywhere. And like, Goalies are voodoo, and we've said that many times on this podcast. So, Jake Allen, could he be the guy and like just turns it around in New Jersey at what is he 33? Sure. Could he be a short term option? Sure. I like the Vanacek for Kakinen deal. You give a goalie like that kind of a fresh start in a maybe with a new goalie coach and a new system. Maybe he turns it around because Vitek Vanacek wasn't doing you any favors. So, I, I kind of like that move. The Jake Allen one makes no sense to me though. Um, but a lot of what New Jersey did today made no sense to me, and the Jets were the biggest beneficiaries. They of that. they have benefited so, entirely. Um, what's their GM's name? Tom Fitzgerald. Is uh, that yeah? I got I got questions for him. And yeah, I shake well, his hand. <laughs> Chevy kept his phone line hot throughout the day, yeah. so that was. Let Let's wrap it there. Um, Tyler Toffoli is a Winnipeg Jet. That's all that needs to be said. Colin Miller is also a Winnipeg Jet. Um, the Jets only giving up picks in the prospect in the process. They keep their prospect pool intact, and uh, we're super excited to watch Tyler Toffoli's first game as Jet. I think that'll be coming Monday against the Washington Capitals. Gabriel Velarde is expected to skate on Monday as well, not necessarily play, but that's good news that it doesn't seem like a long term thing for him. And outside of that, we're going to be live again on Sunday. As it looks right now, it's going to be all three of us for the first time on an LFP Live, so that'll be yeah. really fun. Join us Sunday at 9 a.m., right off the heels of the Jets and Canucks game Saturday night. The next morning, 9 a.m., LFP Live number four. We'll get Elliot's thoughts on the Tyler Toffoli acquisition. We will break down uh, tonight's game against the Kraken, or last night's game when you're hearing this, against the yeah. Seattle Kraken. Tonight's game against the Vancouver Canucks. And then we will join you for your Sunday morning on LFP Live. And then we'll be back next Tuesday, next Thursday for our usual episodes. But join us Sunday. Brian, anything else you want to say on the way out? Uh, I just want to say that for a couple of years now, we've wanted the Jets to push their chips in as much as they deem to be pushing it in. They this did it. it. This they is did. it. This, this is the moment where I feel like they finally made their move to say, you know what, we're, we're going for it. And I think it's going to pay off. And I can't wait to watch it down the stretch here. And they didn't even move any prospects. Exactly. Like three years from now, Rucker McGordy and Cole Perfetti will still be like mainstays on like, I don't know. Like I just, it, it's mind boggling. They're going all in and they still have their top end young prospects. So I'm thrilled. They still have their first round pick next year. This is a great day um, for the Winnipeg Jets and it's going to be a fun two months. Um, and remember that take I had about Tyler fully scoring big goals, because I think you'll see some, some of it sprinkled in during the regular season. And then in the playoffs, you're really going to see it. So I'm really excited. This is a bit of a longer episode, but it was a special day. So Not I didn't justified. mind going live. It, it was very justified. Thank you for joining us. Make sure you join us Sunday. Make sure you drop a like on the video. If you're here on YouTube, subscribe, um, join us again, Sunday, rate and review the podcast. If that's where you are. And we will see you Sunday morning at 9 a.m. 
Thanks for listening to episode 74 of the Level Flight Podcast. Enjoy the games over the next couple of days, everyone. See you. See you.